The inspiration for Holmes and his deductive powers was Professor Joseph Bell of Edinburgh University, under whom the young Conan Doyle studied medicine. And I used, as a student, uh, to have an old professor, his name was Bell, who was extraordinarily quick at deductive work. He would look at the patient, he would hardly allow the patient to open his mouth, but he would make his diagnosis of the disease and also very often of the patient's nationality and occupation and other points entirely by his part of observation. So naturally I thought to myself, well, if a scientific man like Bell was to come into the detective business, he wouldn't do these things by chance. He'd get the thing by building it up scientifically. The classic Strand magazine illustrations, this was Holmes in disguise in The Final Problem, came about by chance. Conan Doyle chose Walter Paget to be the illustrator of his stories, but his brother, Sidney Paget, opened the letter by mistake. Sidney not only took the commission, but went on to use his brother's rather aquiline features as the model for Sherlock Holmes. Such had been the success of the first story, A Study in Scarlet, that a second followed in 1890. The sign of four contained elements that were to recur in later stories. When intellectual stimulation was absent, Holmes sought the chemical alternatives. Watson recorded that Holmes's sinewy forearm and wrist was dotted and scarred with innumerable puncture marks. He alternated between morphine and cocaine, which he always took in a 7% solution. Holmes himself believed that although its influence was physically bad, cocaine was transcendingly stimulating and clarifying to the mind. At the time, such drugs were legally available and regularly taken by many of the so-called aesthetes, including the poet Coleridge and even Queen Victoria herself. But in the 1890s, it was not realized that addiction could be dangerous. Holmes was at least partly addicted to cocaine, and he was also a very heavy smoker. You have to remember that cocaine was legal at that time, so these were on a par. And one reason, undoubtedly, was to seek excitement. Holmes's mind stagnated without excitement, and drugs were one 1893, way to Conan Doyle decided that he had had enough of his most famous creation. The agent of doom was to be his deadliest enemy, the Napoleon of crime. Professor Moriarty. After a chase across Europe, the final struggle took place in Switzerland at the Reichenbach Falls. We both know how this ends. As the police news showed, Official attitudes were based on class prejudice. The appropriately named detectives still believed the myth that crime was committed only by the lower orders, not by the gentry. What is interesting about Holmes is Holmes and Conan Doyle, Conan Doyle through Holmes, he completely dispels this myth. He actually shows that crime is not a pathological thing. Crime is a result of environment, it is a result of, of people's individuals personalities and he transcends this idea that crime is merely the product of the dangerous classes this wonderful Victorian idea of the the people of the streets the people of the underclass Holmes shows us that the crimes the great criminals can just as easily exist in the drawing rooms and the salons of the West End of London as they do in the stews and the alleyways of the East End and I think for this reason, among many others, he is well ahead of his time, again, showing how much more ahead of his time he was than any other writer and any other detective of his period.
The name's Sherlock Holmes and the address is 221B Baker Street.